a query that I've had regarding the Imagine and the Gypsy. I've had a couple of queries about the Imagine and the Gypsy. Uh, one of them is just to say what's the position with regard to the Gypsy for Imagine section on the Gypsy and basically at the moment the Gypsy for the Imagine does not have all the features that the Gypsy for the Expression, which is the one we've got here, has available. So you do not get on the Gypsy for Imagine things like your weld features, you don't get to choose where you position on the mat, etc, etc. So you don't get a lot of those features. However, it is a lot better than it was when it first came out. There is a question mark over whether it is going to improve any further than it is now because the difficulty that I understand Provacraft have is that the amount of memory required in order to have those features is quite substantial and it's whether the Gypsy has that available to it with such big images that are those for the Imagine. I think that's why part of the reason is why they've got the Cricut Craft Room because obviously by using the servers on the computer's servers that gives them a lot more memory by a massive amount in order to be able to allow those features to occur. So they're still working on it is my understanding but whether it happens we just don't know. The main question I'm going to be looking at today is about actually using the Gypsy for Expression on the Cricut Imagine where obviously you can use the welding etc you can position things on the mat now the question really is is one can it be done and two if it can how and where do we know when to where to position things etc so we're going to work this out together and see what happens and um, obviously the, the main thing will be that you will only be able to cut um, personally obviously having got the expression I wouldn't naturally turn to my imagine just for cutting so I haven't really thought about using this part of the gypsy for on my imagine before I just assumed this was for the expression and the other part was for the imagine so we'll see I am um, so let's get going so I'm going to use quite a nice simple cartridge um, it's got some nice simple cuts on it and um, because it was designed actually for cutting out stamping material and used for stamping out images so we're going to use the stamping card okay, so I really like this little owl here so I want my blackout feature I think on this one or do I want my shadow let's go for blackout no, shadow okay so I'm going to take two of my owls and one of the little sentiments that go with it and then I want a plain owl a f sort of the original image which is all in my cue bar there so then we're going to pop that all into my main mat like so then we're going to separate it by using this key here and we're just going to get rid of these two for the moment out the way okay so I want this owl to be at 5.25 And then the same for this one. Okay, so now I want to just make sure, I'm trying to make sure this is going to fit in a 6x6 envelope. So now I need to take this top owl and I need to flip him upside down, so like so. Then I want to zoom in so I can have a really close look at his ears and just to say the more you zoom in when you use the nudge keys over here the more um, small the increments that it nudges so if you only need a really small amount then go as close as you can to nudge it across Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe just a squidge over there. Okay, so that looks good. So we can see we've overlapped the two, so we're now going to make it one image. Then we need to go back and weld, and then check the weld, make sure that we're happy. And where it's got the grey area is where it's not going to cut, so we just connect that side 
and check that side and that looks really good pleased with that and then we're going to take my other owl and I'm just putting him over the top for the minute just to check my sizing and everything and I'm going to do him again a 5.25 because that should layer up fine now this is a shadow feature so he should the other one was a shadow so he should fit in but I need to just check As you can see, there's not much of a shadow on that, so I want to see if I can take him down just a little bit, just to... So I'm going to try taking it down to five inches, and that's given me a really nice margin around all the edges, and it's quite nice and even. So for some reason, the shadow feature on that didn't seem to be quite right for my taste, so I've taken him down a little, so I'm happy with that now. So I'm going to put him over in that corner. And my little hello, I may or may not use, but in case I do, let's take him down. Whoops. Let's take him down. We want him to sit perhaps somewhere like there. So we've taken him down to just half an inch, which may be a bit ambitious to cut that, but we'll see. Okay, so we've laid out our images. So we've got our big our card that we've made, a nice shape card, our layer, and our little sentiment down in the corner. So now we need to lay up our mat. When you look at the imagined part of the gypsy, the arrow which is showing you the feed direction of the mat, the real mat, is at the top of the page. Don't let that confuse you as to where you position the elements. Whenever you position the elements, follow the arrow. On the imagine part, it's up there, so orientate your mat so the arrow is facing upwards. On this case, when you're loading up your mat, orientate your mat so the arrow is facing that way. So you always are going to be placing it in the position that the gypsy is talking to the cricket and telling it this is the way that it sh when you feed it this is the part that's going to cut because when you feed it through whether the arrow's here or here the gypsy understands that or and the cricket understands that and knows where it is and it should cut according to that that's the theory now of course because we're working with the expression part of the gypsy on the imagine it may be that it actually is twisted around so we will find that out when we put it through because it may be that this arrow we need to ignore and we need to pretend it's the imagine screen where the arrow would be at the top and realign our pieces accordingly so first attempt we're going to align it according to this arrow here and we'll see if that works i hope that makes sense but hopefully it'll make sense when you see me put the pieces on the mat okay so here we have the imagine mat and as you can see i have my arrow pointed to the left hand side and as you can see from my gypsy, the arrow here is also pointing to the left hand side. And what I was talking about is on the imagined screen of the gypsy, the arrow is pointing upwards, like so. So when you are, when you are putting together, uh, laying out your paper on the imagined part of the gypsy, then you need to align your mat with the arrow pointing upwards. So this is what we're testing today, is whether the gypsy is actually in control when you put it to the imagine or whether the imagine is the one that takes control um, of where you know of which direction the mat is feeding so to start with we're going to assume that the gypsy is in control and we're going to lay our mat with the arrow pointing to the left hand side as per the gypsy for expression section okay so i've got my pieces of paper cut so i'm going to lay them out accordingly i've got my big piece which is going to go down here as you can see there when I'm using Anna Griffin patterned paper then I've got a smaller six by six piece which is for this top corner here and 
and then I've got a little small piece which is actually a self adhesive and it's a die cuts with a view little mat stack self adhesive mat stack which I thought would be very helpful for that sentiment I don't know how that will cut um, so we'll see how that goes okay so as you can see we've now laid that out as per our gypsy so we've got the big piece down here the smaller piece six by six up here and then the small piece down here in this corner okay so let's go over to the imagine and see fingers crossed what happens and hopefully this cuts just fine we're over at the imagine and we're ready to press the cut button on our gypsy so let's press cut and it is connecting it is recognizing so that's good so now we're going to put it in, the paper in arrow first it's asking me to load the mat so we're going to put it in in the correct way I must just change my blade whoops That's it. so we're going to say load mat and it says press go which it's doing and I'm just holding it firmly and I'm just hoping that the rest of the settings are going to be okay. And now it's going back to cut. And it's just looking at where everything is. And it's about to cut according to this, so let's see if this is the right way around. it looks good it looks correct so it looks like you basically follow the arrows as per the screen that you're working on and the gypsy will dominate whatever machine you're using it will say to it right I'm, I'm in control this is the one that, that you know this is the screen this is the direction that you need to work from so follow the arrows on the screen and load your mat up as per we described. So twist the mat round to match the arrow on your screen and then load the paper to mirror image, sorry, not to mirror, to match. And then that should work just fine. It appears to be working fine now. The only thing I didn't manage to do was check the pressure normally you can set the pressure of the Imagine via the Gypsy which obviously I was not able to do on this perhaps I could have done it on the Imagine itself first I don't know but there was no option to do that on the Gypsy for Expression section as you would have done with the Gypsy for Imagine okay but as you can see it's cutting out in exactly the right places at least Okay, so fingers crossed that's cut out so let's go back to the desk and see what we've got okay so just pulling this off as you can see it's cut through so it's almost like it's remembered my previous settings which are always pretty much at maximum so that's really good and it's even cut through all of the layers on this um, self adhesive paper which is great it didn't matter to me but obviously with self adhesive paper you could treat it like vinyl and do sort of the kiss cut uh, way of doing it so we've got our little hello. Obviously I need to poke out the little pieces. And then we've got our layer, just very carefully because it's a new mat. And then my main card. And it's cut out absolutely beautifully. Okay, so let's put this card okay, together. So first things first, let's fold our little card in half, our little owl, making sure that he lines up nicely. And then just, I suppose I really ought to get the bone folder. Creasing him at his ears, <laughs> like so. And then taking our layer, 
which fits on beautifully. Very pleased with that. I think I might use him. That's better. So we're going to just uh, use a bit of spray adhesive for this one. And I've got this uh, Crafters Companion Stick and Stay, which is brilliant. I find that really easy for something like this. So let's just get a piece of paper, a bit of scrap to spray onto. Because you don't want it all over your hands. Okay, and then just give it a couple of seconds just for the propellant to disperse and then very cute I think I might just tidy up that piece there with a pair of scissors it's just where I didn't fold it very well rather than the cut that's better and then taking our little hello, I'm just trying to decide. I need to highlight his, um, I want to highlight all the eyes and things. So I'm going to take a, a white gel pen and I'm going to just... just finishing off the last little piece and as you can see I changed from white to this lovely aqua green which matched in with our hello and brought that in together a lot better I thought and showed up a lot better so now I'm just going to peel off the sticky back layer off the back of that and I'm going to place that there I think there we go okay, so here's our finished card I hope that's answered the questions that were asked and I hope that you've enjoyed watching the card being made anyway thanks again for watching and I'll see you all again soon bye